So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the basic postulates of quantum mechanics. And I'm going to do a short review of differential equations that will let us uh, solve uh, quantum mechanical systems in the next video. So I'm, this is by no means a comprehensive introduction to quantum mechanics. But if you've seen it before, this will serve as a brief review. And if you haven't, these are sort of the assumptions that we're working off of. The first is the idea of energy quantization. So typically in traditional mechanics, we think of energy as this kind of continuous quanta. So if you're a, if you're a ball, for example, and you're moving with some velocity v, then you can have any energy, uh, one half mv squared. Doesn't matter. Um, it, it doesn't matter what V is. V could be 9.04 meters per second. It could be 9.00000008 meters per second. Uh, it could be 500 or 150. Uh, v can take any continuous value. But in quantum mechanics, when things get really, really, really tiny, uh, so if this ball became really small, like the size of an atom, we don't. We no longer have continuous energy values we're only allowed to exchange energy in individual packets uh, called photons. And the energy of this individual packet is just H, which is Planck's constant, times the frequency of the photon F. And it turns out that this is a general formula for the energy of uh, multiple or en any, any particle really uh, in quantum mechanics. So the energy of a particle is described this way energy of a particle. And uh, another postulate of quantum mechanics is that balls uh, or any, any kind of object really aren't described by a single position. So in classical mechanics, I'd have say this ball and it's gotten, it's got certain coordinates, X naught, Y naught, Z naught. In quantum mechanics, that ball cannot have a specific place. It doesn't, the, the ball itself is sort of smeared out uh, in space. We can't say with certainty where the ball is. And that's described by the uncertainty principle or that the delta momentum delta x is less than or equal to Planck's constant divided by two pi. And that means that the position of a ball in the in a single coordinate is related to the momentum and we can't say with certainty if we know what the ball's momentum is within a certain certainty we cannot say what the position is uh, within so if we have delta x less than or equal to h over 2 pi and h over 2 pi is often called h bar and that's actually the notation that i'm going to use uh, so x has to be less than or equal to h bar divided by delta p. So if we have a certain certainty of momentum, so say we measure this within 1%, then we cannot measure x within less than h bar uh, times 1% accuracy. So that's that's the basic idea behind the uncertainty principle. And there's a second version of it uh, that has to do with energy, and that's delta E delta T is less than or equal to H. So if you know the energy with a certain certainty, you cannot know uh, the particle's position in time. And this is, these are just postulates of quantum mechanics. They are true as far as we know, um, and they're also really complicated and really, uh, the, the consequences are really far reaching. And we're only going to scratch the surface here. So if you're interested, I recommend you take a course on quantum mechanics if you if that's not already part of your curriculum. Uh, the third postulate of quantum mechanics is that particles are waves. Or uh, particles are not particles, but they're described by waves. They evolve in time as if they were waves, like water waves, we know sort of propagate outward from a source. So if you drop a pebble into a pond, for example, the waves will radiate outward. 
uh, and you'll have you can get interference between waves and wave waves have all sorts of phenomena that we don't typically think of as being associated with particles. But uh, de Broglie uh, showed that particles do in fact have a wavelength, which is described by the equation lambda or the wavelength of the particle is equal to Planck's constant divided by the particle's momentum. And so these are the three basic postulates of quantum mechanics. And some consequences, or the ones that we're going to have to worry about, are that uh, electrons must be described by what's called a wave function. And the wave function is often abbreviated with this Greek letter psi. And so electrons don't have a certain position they don't really act like particles. They act more like waves often. And we can't say with certainty where the electron's position is. Uh, we can say, well, the, the only thing we can say actually is that the probability uh, density of the electron or the probability that it's found at any given location is just proportional to the magnitude of the wave function squared. And this is typically what physicists deal with when they want to make predictions about, okay, where will a particle actually end up? Uh, they deal with the magnitude of the wave function squared. And so we're going to actually solve for the wave function in the next video. And then we're gonna take the magnitude squared and we're gonna see where the where particles are actually located or where an electron is, is located with certain probability. Uh, so, there's there's one question that you might be having, and that's well, that's that's all great, but how do I do quantum mechanics? So we can make these postulates, we can say all the interesting things we'd like, but how do we actually use it to solve engineering problems? And the answer is in the Schrodinger equation. And you might have seen it in various forms, but I'm going to write it in uh, a form that I think is the most friendly. So the Schrodinger equation is actually going to take one of two forms. The first one is uh, d squared y uh, dx squared, where x is your uh, coordinate, x is some coordinate, and y is the wave function. Uh, is equal to minus k squared times y, uh, or sometimes it'll appear as d squared y dx squared equals plus k squared y. And so the Schrodinger equation will always be in, well, uh, I should say for the things we'll be using it for, it'll always end up in one of these two forms. And we actually know the solutions to these differential equations. If you've taken a differential equations class before, uh, which I assume you have by this point, we know that the solution to this is just either y equals sine of kx or y equals cosine of kx. And we know that we can multiply either one of these by a constant, uh, so times a1 or times a2, and we can even add them together. So y could be uh, a1 times sine of kx plus a2 times cosine of kx. So we know that these are the solutions to this differential equation. This is the Schrodinger equation. This is all it is. Uh, typically, y is actually written as, written as psi, and that's what we'll do in the next video. But just to make it look much more friendly, uh, it, the Schrodinger equation doesn't bite. I've, I've written it as y, which is a variable you're probably more familiar with at this point. So if it appears in this form with a positive k squared, we know the solutions for that. Uh, we know that y must equal e to the minus kx, uh, again, times some constant that we don't know because that will satisfy the differential equation, or y equals e to the plus kx times some other constant, or even uh, a summation of both of those. So minus kx a1 plus e to the plus kx times a2. 
And so these uh, are the solutions. This was just a very brief differential equations review. These are the solutions that we'll be using in solving the Schrodinger equation. And that leads us right into the, the next video where we're going to try and model a semiconductor using quantum mechanics.